hope you're all keeping well. Over the last few weeks, the business development team have been contacting members, both business travel and leisure. The purpose of these calls was to keep you up to date with what Advantage is doing with regards to the coronavirus, understand challenges that members are going through, and also offer any specific advice that members may need. So in the main, members have been reporting that they are very busy. That's in terms of uh, rebooking customers, making amendments, making cancellations, but also helping customers repatriation uh, back to the UK when they found themselves stranded overseas. The other challenge that members have had is with regards to contacting suppliers. There's no doubt that the industry has been overwhelmed um, and I think everybody's feeling the squeeze when it comes to being able to uh, maintain the sort of service levels that they would norm normally have expected. The other point that's really cropped up, uh, which cropped up quite early on actually, is the issue around the credit notes. So credit notes being issued by tour operators and also airlines in lieu of a cash refund. Now, I'm not going to go into details on that. Um, we know it's a big issue around the industry and we're still waiting for government to make a final decision. It probably would be worthwhile you having a look at the video that Joe Kalatsis did. Uh, so Joe Kalatsis from Themis Advisory did for Advantage last week. Um, Joe sets out in a lot more detail there what the position is. And I think members will probably be able to take something from that in terms of helping them position the credit note situation with their customers. Members have also been discussing with us the job retention scheme which was launched by government last month. So I think most members are making uh, good use of that. It makes sense from a financial point of view. If businesses are busy trying to rebook, amend, repatriate, uh, there's a bit of a balance to be had there in terms of furloughing team members or having them work in the business. And I guess that's for each individual business to decide what to do in those circumstances. Now, when the scheme was launched, some of the information was a little bit patchy, as one would expect, I guess. Uh, we're now getting to more detail coming through uh, on the scheme. And there's a couple of bits I just wanted to update you on, which have literally just come in. So, um, individuals who employ employees can make those employees furloughed. So, if you're a sole trader, you can make uh, employees furloughed. Now, that wasn't specifically mentioned in the scheme when it first launched, so I know there's been some queries around that. So it's not just open to limited companies, for example. So it's quite important. Any members who are employing uh, foreign nationals, they can also be furloughed uh, in the, uh, with, with the scheme. And anybody who's employing people on a fixed term contract, those can also be uh, furloughed as well. So that's uh, some clarity on those points. The other point that's worth just bearing in mind is that employees can be furloughed multiple times. So part of the um, arrangement is that employees have to be furloughed for uh, three consecutive weeks. If after the third week you need to bring somebody back into the business because things have got busier, then you can, uh, you can bring somebody back in from being furloughed. You may have to then furlough them further down the line, but that's all acceptable providing they're doing uh, three consecutive weeks. There are still some queries around um, staff being on annual leave and being furloughed. There's also some queries around staff that have been tupied uh, in from another company. So um, on those issues, we'd always say seek um, independent uh, legal advice. The, um, this latest information that we've had in is part of a wider clarification of, uh, of the scheme. So we'll put that on the coronavirus hub so that you've got all the information that you need around that. The other aspects of business which we've been talking to members about is safeguarding the long-term future of their business. And specifically, we've been talking about the importance of cash flow forecasting. Now, for a lot of small businesses, this isn't something that they do um, on a regular basis. Um, however, the next uh, six months and possibly the next 12 months are going to be quite critical for many businesses. So we've been asking members to really think about putting together a cash flow forecast and I think this serves a number of purposes. Firstly, it's going to help identify any specific cash issues that may crop up um, in the future. 
Now, the quicker you know about where those challenges lie, the quicker you can set about trying to um, offset those uh, where possible. The other aspect that is worth considering is that if you decided to go for a coronavirus business interruption loan, which is being offered by the government. So this is a loan scheme where government are underwriting 80% of a loan uh, offered via one of the approved banks. You will need a cash flow forecast for at least 12 months. Uh, now, part of the reason for that, of course, is that the bank's going to want to be able, uh, want you to be able to demonstrate that you can um, uh, meet the affordability criteria for paying back any loans that you have. But I think at this moment in time, putting in place a cash flow forecast is going to be absolutely critical and will help you manage the business much more effectively rather than there being any surprises as you go along. So the last thing I want to talk to you about today is ABTA. Now ABTA have been at the forefront of pushing government to make some decisions with regards to the credit note and generally about government supporting our industry. They are in the process of launching a new campaign which is called Whatever It Takes to Save Future Travel and we'll have more information on that campaign in tomorrow's update. So it just remains for me to say that if we can be of any more assistance to members, please do get in touch. Um, we're more than happy to help where we can. Thank you.